New studies out on hair dyes and breast cancer risk and a wide range of media has covered it in full force, some with caution and some without. Let's take a step back and consider the whole picture. This is Healthcare Triage News. To the research. Study published December 3rd in the International Journal of Cancer reports that the use of hair dyes and chemical straighteners, particularly among black women, is associated with a higher risk of breast cancer. The researchers analyzed data from the SISTER study, which tracks the health of over 50,000 women who had a sister diagnosed with breast cancer but did not have breast cancer themselves when entering the study between 2003 and 2009. The current study reports that use of permanent, but not semi-permanent, or temporary hair dye is associated with a 45% increase in breast cancer risk for black women and a 7% increase in risk for white women. Use of chemical straighteners reportedly increased risk equally between black and white women, even though 74% of black women report using them compared to only 3% of white women. The problem is that these studies require many of the same caveats you've heard me talk about before, but bear with me as I repeat. Those percentages I just mentioned represent the relative risks. Absolute risks give you numbers that are more meaningful, but they are almost never reported. These are also observational data, which means nothing has been proven to be causal. The data, like how many times have you dyed your hair and what kind of dye was it, were also obtained via self-report, and since memory is extremely fallible, we have to accept that these are imprecise. I don't mean that they're worthless, I mean we have to be measured when we interpret them. It's also good to mention that data on associations like these can be wildly inconsistent, often due to the factors I've just mentioned. Plenty of studies have reported the associations that show an increase in the risk of breast cancer, and then enough have reported that permanent hair dye does not increase the risk that the Susan G. Komen Foundation website takes the position that there isn't conclusive evidence of risk here. Of course, it's important to study risk factors for breast cancer, and of course, it's important to understand the effects of various chemicals and compounds and the products we put in and on our bodies, and of course, I understand that we always can't do a randomized controlled trial when it comes to potential carcinogens. But we need to be more careful about lathering media attention on single observational studies reporting on very small signals that could very well have no real life significance. Kudos to the NPR report in this study, which included the view of a medical oncologist at Johns Hopkins who pointed out, and I quote, this is a very weak signal that these things might be causing cancer in the population. He goes on to point that the actual risk factor of these products is quite low when compared with other known carcinogens. An inch of scientific progress is often covered like a mile in the media, misleading and often unnecessarily alarming the public. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on things you can do to prevent some cancers. We'd also like you to think about liking and subscribing down below and going to patreon.com slash where you can help make the show bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and of course, our surgeon, Admiral Sam. 